have with us in the room uh, as The ACT Accelerator will not be able to deliver on its goals without a significant increase in funding. The $2.7 billion it has received to date has been generous and has enabled the robust startup phase. But this is less than 10% of the overall needs. The ACT Accelerator still faces a funding gap of $35 billion US dollars. Of the emergencies program and of Between now and the end of the year, we have a limited window of opportunity to scale up the ACT Accelerator and fully enable the equi equitable allocation framework. Currently, the ACT Accelerator is supporting research into promising vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics. But we need to rapidly scale up our clinical trials, manufacturing, licensing, and regulation capacity so that these products can get to people and start saving lives. There is a protocol for what you do when something happens. And if it's a mild uh, side effect, there, there's a, there are things to be done. If it is major, uh, as it was in this case, uh, it was a severe side event, and therefore the trial was halted. And again, this is normal procedure. This is good clinical practice, because safety is of the utmost, uh, is the highest priority in any clinical trial. And so the trial has been halted. The Data Safety Monitoring Board is going to look into the details of this individual uh, with the reported side effect. There will be, uh, obviously, discussions and then a decision made on, uh, on how to proceed. So I think this is a good, uh, perhaps a wake-up call or a lesson for everyone um, to recognize the fact that there are ups and downs in research. There are ups and downs in clinical development. And, and we have to be prepared for those. Um, it's not always a fast and a straight road. But we don't need to be overly discouraged because these things happen. And we have to wait for the determination by the Data Safety Monitoring Board uh, on this particular case, and then what the next steps are going to be uh, for this vaccine trial. And Oxford's uh, coronavirus vaccine... Uh, since a few trials did start in the month of July, it is possible that we may start getting some results, at least interim results, by the end of the year. However, you know, follow-up for safety needs to continue longer, but the minimum is, is six months. So um, while it's very possible that results might start coming in, and let's hope we, we get some positive results, the regulatory agencies would then need some time to examine those results and then take an opinion on, on, um, on whether the uh, vaccine is ready for licensing. Speak uh, of COVID-19 as a pandemic. Uh, uh, thank you. Just, just to remind you that the <clears throat> Dr. Ted Ross declared a public health emergency or international concern on January the 30th of 2020. Um, and six months ago, uh, as part of a, uh, one of his uh, press statements, characterized the, 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 the uh, multi-country epidemic as having reached pandemic levels. But WHO had issued its highest level of alert under international law on, uh, on January the 30th. That we speak uh, of COVID-19 as a pandemic. So I think from a WHO perspective, we can only commit to do what is humanly possible from where we sit to work with our member states, to work with everyone around the world to bring this pandemic to an end. Uh, the end will not come soon. Uh, we are all, all of us, every citizen on this planet is tired um, and we wish this virus were not with us. Uh, but we must, uh, we must work to the end of this. Yeah, uh, for the next question, we will go to